Journey 2020. I'm Charles Morris. Happy to be with you here once again on Monday coming off the weekend. Hope that you uh, did have a great weekend and you enjoying your Monday starting off the week. Um, you know, most of us are getting ready for uh, football, football season. And uh, here in the Central Florida area here in Orange County, this was the first day of school. And a lot of parents are going, yay! <laughs> But um, I was to have a guest on uh, today, but uh, not surprisingly that um, he didn't show up, but uh, didn't expect him to. But that's OK. We're we're still going to work on it. Uh, and it would have been a good show, but uh, we're still going to see if we can get uh, him to come on the show. And I talk about that later. Anyway, I'm Charles Morris, where we've been around since 2013, uh, the journey 2020, where we talk about some of any and everything, some fun, some serious. But uh, we try to keep you in touch with what's going on, uh, not only here in Central Florida, but other things around the world. And with that being said, again, uh, like I said, uh, school started for Orange County here in the Orlando area. And I was thinking earlier today, I want you to think back for a moment. Go back to when you were in school and what was it like on the first day of school in that feeling coming off the summer. And the funny thing about as you get older, you realize that a minute is always a minute, an hour and always an hour, a day is always a day, and there's 24 hours in a day and so on and so forth. But somehow time seems to be different when you're young. Um, whatever that is, whether it's an hour is longer, whether or not an hour is shorter, or didn't the summer seems a little longer than it does now when it comes June, July, and August? And it just seems like summer was a long time. But now when you get older, you realize that summer is really not that long, right? And it seems like the kids are going back to school earlier and earlier, and they seem like they have less time off over the summer. Because I'm going way back, I can remember when we started school in September. And then I think around close to my senior year, we were going to school I think at the end of August, I'm trying to think, but we did have a full summer, uh, but I don't think the kids uh, have a full summer now. But I just for a moment, just want you to think, what was it like, uh, you know, that first day of school? Was it was it trying to uh, pick out? And, and, and it was funny because I can remember the first day of school and how we all used to get dressed up, put on something really nice. For the first day. Now after that, it was kind of like what, whatever. But that first day of school, back when you were in like seventh grade, uh, eighth grade, and so on and so forth, I can remember um, a, a certain outfit that I won't, that I would be too embarrassed to show you right now, uh, because it had to do with polyester pants and bell bottoms, and maybe some hip huggers. And I do remember my hip huggers from sixth grade, by the way. I do, I do remember my hip huggers from, from sixth grade. But that whole feeling, and then the funny thing is there's just something about an emotion, something that is attached to that first day of school. It's kind of special coming off the, coming off the, the summer, um, getting ready to go back into the school and seeing some of your old friends adjusting to your new teachers and also checking out your new, because it's, it's like when you go and you um, get your school clothes, because for some of us, we've kind of grown over the summer. And so some of the clothes that you used to wear, depending on the period of time, uh, you know, when you're buying the school clothes, what grade you were in, because there's a lot of growth that does take place for some of us over the summer. And that whole thing of uh, going school shopping uh, for the clothes and stuff like that, not, not like it is now because we, 
dealt less with the school supplies and dealt more with the school clothes because the school supplies was like really nothing because we, I mean, we had pencils, we had paper and that kind of stuff. So now it's a little different, uh, more so. But anyway, but I just wanted to tap into you real quick uh, and, and just have you go back down memory lane and just for a moment to think like, what was it like and what was like one of your most rememberable moments of first day of school, regardless of whether or not it was middle school, junior high school, high school, elementary, or uh, even kindergarten, you know, because I go back and I remember kindergarten very well. And I, you know, my grandmother was a kindergarten teacher, so, and I remember my kindergarten graduation and how hard they work with us because you know you got a little five-year-old going and turning to six and we had to practice time and time again how to walk down the aisle for you know for graduation and and uh, my, my little white outfit and our shoes and, and all the you know remember all of that but uh, I just wanted to tap into that for a quick moment just thinking about the, the kids nowadays and their first day of school um, and also uh, remember to uh, like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and make sure that you leave a comment. You can always email us as well. You may have a show idea. A couple of things. One, make sure that you tune in to the third Monday of every month where um, we have the uh, Dr. Kathy Meeks, uh, the sex therapist, certified, certified. Uh, what she's bringing to light and if you may have some questions uh, she just did an awesome great workshop called love and relationships uh, man the, the, the room was full we're gonna talk about that on the next show with her which would be next week because next week that would be the third Monday but every third Monday she joined us right here on the journey 2020 now starting the fourth Monday of every month we will be with uh, Hakeem Nkrumah, who is uh, the founder and the president and the manager and everything else, CEO and so on of Young Fathers of Central Florida. I think this is probably other than the sex therapists, <laughs> will be a very fascinating um, show because it is dealing and asking the questions on your right as a parent. So we will be taking your questions and comments and trying to help you out if you are someone who's trying to uh, maintain custody of visiting rights as a father or a mother and fighting through all the bureaucracy and all the stuff that you have to go through uh, just to try to uh, see your child. And there's so much in between all of that through the relationship with the mother and the father but also the laws. What are the laws? What are your rights? What are the things that you don't know? What are the things that you should know? So on and so forth. So we're, we're gonna be covering all of that the fourth Monday of every month. So you spread the word. Please let people know that starting this month, on the fourth Monday of every month, we will have from Young Fathers of Central Florida, uh, and we will have lawyers on as well, to answer your questions and what are your rights legally so you can better uh, suit yourself when you go in, to, in, uh, in front of the judge or you will know uh, what truly you should be paying in child support or whether or not somebody's supposed to be paying you in child support, we'll be able to answer all those questions to fight through uh, or to help you because every time I meet with some of the people that Hakeem is helping out and to sit and to listen to their stories, one of the biggest problems that they have is not knowing the law, not knowing their rights. So it's very, very, very important that you understand that you have rights, especially as a father, because in our country for a long period of time, we think the mother have all the rights. Well, that's not true. And the thing is, a lot of times, circumstances and situations change. So if you're paying child support and what you were, you were doing, then all of a sudden some, something happens and the situation changed 
and you're not making as much money, then the numbers need to change. But if you don't go and let the courts know that, and if you can't make the payments, because I've seen it and heard the horror stories of people who have good intentions who want to make their child support payment, but because they lost a job or they got hurt or so on and so forth, now they don't have the income coming in like they did before, not knowing that they can do something as far as file uh, the, uh, the new information to let the courts know so the numbers can be adjusted to what is going on now versus what was going on late, uh, uh, later. So you need to tune in to the fourth Monday of every month so let people know it's so very, 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 very important that you tune in especially if you want to know your rights. So that brings us up to today's show. And today's show is, I'm, I would like to highlight someone that, I, well, I heard a great speech. Uh, my cousin, who is the Bishop of the 12th District of the AME up in Little Rock, Arkansas. Well, my cousin asked me to come up in April to help him with a conference. And I did, and then he asked me to come up in July to help him with a conference in Little, I mean, in Fort Smith, Fort Smith, Arkansas. And on the closing day, the, he asked me to come take these pictures because everybody was all excited about this person uh, and asked to take pictures, I mean, individual pictures. So that had actually never happened before. So I was like, oh, okay. Cause I'm thinking this is a guest pastor, guest bishop speaker that he's bringing in to close out the conference. And so when it started, cause I went in to take the pictures, this is before it started. So I went in and I took the pictures. So when it started, the person that I was working with, Ann, I said, Ann, who is, who is the guest speaker there? And she said, oh, that's, oh she, no. She said, have you seen the show? the have and the have nots. I said, no, I've never seen the show. I've heard of it, but I've never, I know I'm, I've never watched it. So I know absolutely nothing about the show. So she said, oh, well, this is Angela Robinson and she plays Veronica Harrington on the show. So I was like, oh, so, okay. So she's an actress, but I've also understand that she's been on Broadway and those type of things. But anyway, um, I, you know, now I know why everybody wanted to take a picture because I guess, you know, because Angela Robinson, a.k.a. Veronica Harrington on the show, I guess a lot of people watch the show. And I guess she's a main character on the show and I understand that she's been on some soap operas and uh, others as, as well in, in acting. So I enjoyed her speech and I want to share it with you. Um, now, my cousin's wife, ev evidently they have been friends since they were about maybe eight years old. So she did the introduction to Miss Robinson, AKA Veronica Harrington. And uh, so I'm going to play her introduction as well. And so, Again, I just wanted to share the speech with you because it's, uh, I enjoyed it and I figured that you would enjoy it as well. So here's Miss uh, Mitchell introducing Miss Robinson, AKA Miss Harrington from the have and the have nots, but please enjoy. Will you receive the supervisor of the 12th Episcopal District. Amen. Sister Cordelia Mitchell. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. But I think I know why y'all are kind of happy with me. Mm-hmm. It's not because of anything I've done. 
It's not because of anything that I've said. I think it might be because of who I know. But that's okay with me because it is my privilege, it is my honor, and I am just overjoyed to be able to introduce the person who will bring our closing message today. She and I have been friends for decades. I mean, literally, I won't tell them how many, but more than one, more than two, more than three, more than four. <laughs> yeah, we have been friends for a long time. We are childhood friends. Yes. Yes. Grew up together in Jacksonville, Florida, um, on the east side, east side of Jacksonville, Florida. And for those of you who know anything about um, the, the area, um, the east side was probably not one of the most desirable areas that people would want to live in. There were no gated communities. There were no rolling green grass or anything like that. It was a pretty rough area uh, within, within Jacksonville. But you know, it produced some really good people. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, childhood friends, out east, high school, graduated high school together. Um, we didn't go to our neighborhood high school. So we went to the high school that everybody wanted to go to, where you had to use somebody else's address to be able to go to that, to that high school. And um, she and I caught, the, caught city transportation together for three years to be able to go to Raines High School. And we graduated together in 1980. She is, she and I are opposites. She was always the talented, um, you know, can sing, can dance, band. She was, this is Miss Fam U. Okay, Miss Fam Yu. And she is as her, the inside beauty pales in comparison to what you see on the outside. She is even more beautiful, even more genuine, even more kind than what you see. This is not Veronica Harrington. No, no, no. I don't know her. I don't know her. But what it speaks to is just how talented she really is. She is a wonderful actress. And she's so good of an actress that my mother, who has known her for decades, is convinced that Angela has changed. <laughs> she says, Angela is just not that sweet girl that she used to be. And I say, yes, she is. That's not Angela. She, no, no, she can't. Nobody can act that well. <laughs> but yes, we are so proud. Every time I see her on a magazine cover, I say, that's my friend. Every time I see her on the show, that's my friend. I remember when I went to New York to see her on Broadway. I sat there thinking, that's my friend. 
So, yeah, it didn't start with Veronica Hamilton on the haves and half-nots. This is Suge Avery from The Color Purple, <laughs> okay? We are just so proud of her. She's not just an actress. She is a wife. And she's even now a mommy. Yes. She and her wonderful husband, Scott, have now been blessed to be able to be parents. And I just thank God for what I know she's going to be able to be in little Robbie's life. We, 12th Episcopal District, we are blessed to be able to have my friend here with us today. This is Angela Robinson Whitehurst. Not just, no, not just Veronica, not just an actress, but what she is above all of that is a woman of God. She, she loves the Lord and it comes out in everything that she does. She's never met a stranger. Someone said we were taking some pictures earlier how down to earth she is. And this is who she is. I don't care where you see her in the mall on the street, wherever, this is what you get. A true woman of God, and I am just so glad to be able to call her my friend. 12th District, let's stand and give her a warm 12th District welcome. How many of you know that it will never lose its power, right? It still works. Amen. Thank you, choir. You guys are amazing. You are, um, you better play that organ. You guys are amazing. Well, good afternoon, 12th Episcopal District. How are you? Y'all good? Amen. Listen, I want to thank you for having me. I am so happy to be here. I love Arkansas. I met my husband in Little Rock, Arkansas. <laughs> Twenty-something years ago. Working at a little theater there. Trying to make my way to Broadway. I made my first stop in Little Rock, Arkansas. I love it here, and I'm so grateful that you've invited me to share with you today. I do have a little bad news, and unfortunately, I, I hate to be the one to have to share it. I, I really wish your, your bishop would have shared it with you, but um, I got word about it, so I'm going to share it with you. Unfortunately, Veronica was unable to make it. She sends her best. She sent me instead. So I hope you accept this little word from me. Is that all right? All right. So I got to tell you, your bishop is one of my favorite people. I am a fan and I have been for years. He has accomplished so many things, and I know that you are aware of his accomplishments. But one of the biggest things that I think he's accomplished is marrying Supervisor Cordelia. Now, you know her as Supervisor, but I call her D. In high school, D and I were joined at the hip. We grew up together. We shared our experiences with one another. We cried over breakups and celebrated one another's accomplishments. Today, 
our lives have taken very different turns and we don't get to see one another much. We don't get to talk much, but when we do, it's as if no time has passed. What we established in high school cannot be erased by time. Supervisor Mitchell will always be my bestie, my confidant. So Dee and I are very different. We were very different even in high school. She was always a scholar. I was always an artist. Dee was AME, I was Baptist. She went to Spelman, I went to FAMU, go Rattlers. We had one main thing in common though, and it binds us today. We always encouraged one another's dreams. I can truly say that there would be no Veronica without a Cordelia. Her encouragement and her belief in me helped me to take my first steps toward a career in acting. You already know this, but I thank you. And I love you so much. So young people, let me encourage you. I know you love hanging out with your friends. And you should always have good friends and enjoy your time with your friends. But surround yourself with people who are going to encourage your dream. Surround yourself with people that's going to push you to pursue your purpose. Even if they don't get it, it's all right. So I'm excited about your focus to reclaim what's been lost. But before we talk about reclaiming, I would like to take a moment to speak to those of you who've never claimed a purpose. To those of you who have never pursued a dream. To those of you who've never committed your life to Jesus. You have to be sure you have claimed something and then you will be reclaiming it over and over again for the rest of your life. Now, you have worshipped this week, so your leaders, I am sure, have taught you the importance of reclaiming your commitment to the Lord. I want to talk to you today about reclaiming three things. Reclaim your dream. Reclaim your service. And reclaim your purpose. Now, what have you been dreaming about? When you share it with people, they don't understand it, so you've decided to suppress it, huh? Since you can remember, you've dreamed of going to a particular college or living in a particular city or pursuing a particular career, singing a particular song, yet fear has caused you to push that dream away. Well, we're reclaiming it today. I believe that dreams are from God and they are meant to be pursued. God did not allow us to dream only to sit idle and long for them for the rest of our lives, but we should indeed run after them. By the way, grown folk, you should know that dreams have no age limit. If you're still dreaming it, you should still be running toward it. If it's still alive in your belly, you owe it to God to pursue it with all of your might. Do not allow the world's definition of time and age to cause you to limit God. God is not limited by your age or your lack. Take the limits off and watch your dreams manifest no matter your age. Think back to your first hopes. Those are usually the ones. The ones that will lead you to your purpose. The ones that will require the most courage. The ones that will lead you to your greatest service. When I was growing up, if there was anything I wanted to be, I would run to my father and I would tell him, Daddy, I want to be a teacher. And he'd say, oh, that's good. Daddy, I want to be a, 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 a basketball player. And he'd say, oh, that's good. This is before the WNBA. I wanted to be a basketball player. I want to be an ad exec. See, if you watch Bewitched when I was little, um, uh, Darren, Samantha's husband, was an ad exec. And that was very creative. And I thought, oh, I want to be that. I want to be an ad exec. I wanted to be a journalist. I wanted to be a TV anchor woman. I wanted to be a politician. All of it. But I had fallen in love with theater at the age of 10. 
And every time I told my parents, I want to be an actor, they'd say, now, didn't you want to be a teacher or something like that? <laughs> Anything but an actor. I realized I had to defy their wishes to follow my dream. I was actually estranged from my hero, my dad, for a brief moment because I wanted to be an actor. My dream, my purpose meant even more to me than his approval. Going to college, my parents said to me, you can take as many classes as you want in the arts, but you cannot major in theater. So I took loads of dance, music, and acting. I struggled finding a major because I was interested in nothing but dance, music, and acting. I finally settled on sociology, and it was there that I would meet professors who would teach me about my culture. They would teach me about self-love, understanding that no matter my degree, I can be of no good to anyone if I don't love myself. I learned that beautiful Bible verse, love your neighbor as you love yourself, means nothing if you don't love yourself. So my ability to love others to truly serve my community began with falling in love with me. All of me, my hair, natural and straight, my hips and my lips, my brothers and sisters, street and elite. I fell in love with me at FAMU. And you know, I found that the more I fell in love with me, the more I loved other people. The more I learned, the more I wanted to serve. Not just get a job, but serve my community, make a difference in my community. See, I was taught, if you're not serving, you aren't living. So even though my dream felt delayed, not being able to major in theater, I was still getting the tools I needed for my journey. Don't hate on the wait, y'all. Actively wait. Doing what you can where you are. Gather your tools. See, when the dream is fulfilled, you won't have time to be scrambling around getting tools. You have to be ready to walk through the door. Reclaim your dream today. So now that you are back to dreaming, y'all back to dreaming now? All right. Now that you're back to dreaming, how does the fulfillment of that dream serve your community? Ah. Uh, you thought it was all about you, didn't you? No. Your dream, whatever it is that's placed in your heart, is really not about you at all. So my father modeled a life of service. He was one of the first black officers in the Army. He came home and he married my mother, an English teacher, and they were doing well, but my father would not hear of leaving the neighborhood that Cordelia told you about, that we grew up in. He would tell me how it's important for our people to see a black man going to work every day to support his family. My father served that community. He saw crack attempt to tear it down, but he would not be moved. You know what he did? He would buy up vacant houses so the dealers wouldn't move into them. And he would tear them down. And my father wasn't a wealthy man, but that's what he would do. His dream for a better community, a better neighborhood, led him to be a beacon of light in that community. And because of my dad's military background, when I was growing up, he would have inspection every Sunday. And so all the kids would come by my house, and we would have to stand up in a line. I had to be in the line, too. And my dad, we had to be in height order. And my dad would walk down the line, and if you were clean and your hair done and everything, he would give you a quarter. If there was something out of place, he'd say, go home and tell your mama don't send you out here looking like that again. I have pictures of those lineups. I will tell you honestly that almost everybody in that line are college graduates now. When my dad passed away, there were many testimonies of people who grew up in my hood people who were now lawyers and doctors and military four-star generals, and they said Mr. Robinson was the reason for their success. Very soon after my father passed away, I remember stopping to reclaim my commitment to service. When I started pursuing acting, there was a lot of pushback. Woo! Everyone around me, except Dee, would say, that's nice. But now, when are you going to get a real job? 
<laughs> Around that time, I read a book by Miles Monroe called In Pursuit of Purpose. I realized what I wanted to do since the age of 10 was not an accident, that I had to do it. If I would have ever known peace, I had to do it. So finally, with little support, I moved to New York, armed with my love of self, a dream, and a desire to serve. I immediately started to be cast in shows. I went back to school, acting school. You see, even a calling and a purpose required training. I was finally studying what I loved, and my gift was making room for me. It's now been four Broadway shows later, national tours, regional theater productions, television, awards, and these things have brought me great supporters, and I am so very grateful. But I need you to know that people need your support before it is evident that it's going to work out. The most beautiful thing about my dear parents, although they doubted, were worried, and did not get my dream, they never missed a show. My father rented vans and traveled the whole country following his daughter with her crazy dreams. He would gather the whole family, I tell you, it would look like a senior citizen's outing, <laughs> to come to my shows. My parents' support taught me that my purpose, my dream, would not be revealed to anyone but me. And even though it wasn't revealed to them and they didn't get it, they supported me anyway. And not sure we would have gotten Uber if someone just told us about it. I'm not sure we would have gotten the iPhone or the internet if someone had just told us about it. But I'm so grateful that somebody supported those trailblazers anyway. Because we're different and blessed because of it. Now, some of you are sitting here wondering, what is my purpose? I don't, I don't know nothing about no purpose. What is my purpose? Use your gifts. See, I often wonder where I would be if Miles Monroe had decided, you know what, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm too tired to write a book. I'm too scared to write a book. You doing what's embedded in you to do changes lives. It's not for you. I'm different because he wrote a book. So you don't really have a choice to do it. I started dreaming in my youth, not just about being an artist, but about using my art as a servant. And there was an art study done some years ago and they asked some five-year-olds, how many of you are artists? And all of them raised their hands. Now, you know five-year-olds. They all said, you want to see me dance? Hey, you want to hear me sing? Oh, I can draw. They're bold. Everyone raised their hand. They asked a group of 11-year-olds, and half of them raised their hands. A group of 16-year-olds, less than half. And a group of adults, only three people raised their hands. Now, do people become less creative as they get older? No. But as we get old, fear and doubt creep in. And we've heard so many negative comments, and we start to believe it, and we stop believing what we knew to be true as a child. When we become adults, we have to pay bills, and that can cause us to forget the dream. Go back. Reclaim your dream. The world is waiting to be healed by your gift. I want to encourage you to take your faith with you. That thing you're dreaming, it's your dream because it is where you will make your greatest contribution to the kingdom. The use of words like faith and kingdom and purpose, <laughs> we think, well, my dream of being a painter certainly won't do all of that. My dream of being a professional athlete certainly won't be spiritual enough to do all that. My dream of being a dancer, eh, it's not exactly kingdom building. But I want to tell you about a young lady. Her name is Lawana Gilliam. When I was in high school, I was a Vikette. A Vikette is one of the dancing girls with the marching band. Have you seen them? You know what I'm talking about? Okay, I was a Vikette. I was the captain. 
at that time, you really had to pledge the band. You couldn't just get in the band. You had to pledge the band. Underclassmen had no respect. Luana is about 5'2". She was a good dancer. And one day after practice, Luana asked to talk to me. Thinking she wanted help with the routine, I gave her the time. She said, and I will never forget, I just wanted to ask you a question. Have you accepted the Lord Jesus as your personal savior? I was stunned. I put on my authoritative voice and I told her, girl, you just learn your steps. Don't worry about me and Jesus. I went home, but I could not sleep. What did that mean? Have I accepted the Lord? What did that mean? For days I couldn't sleep. I was baptized when I was 10 years old. So is she saying, I don't know Jesus? I pulled out my Bible, which I had never pulled out before. And I was going to find what she was talking about. What did that mean? A few weeks later, Luana invited me to church with her. Again, I told her, learn your steps. Little Miss Luana asked me to church several times until I said yes. I went to church with the freshmen. That Sunday, the pastor had an altar call. If anyone here has never accepted Jesus, come to the altar. I went to the altar at 16 years old, and my life has never been the same. My relationship with Jesus started that day. And when Jesus and I got tight, I wanted to get out of the band. I can't be wearing no short skirts. I can't be playing no secular music. I told my mom, I got to get out of the band. I'm living for Jesus. In my mom's words, I think of every job I accept because there are no accidents. My mom said, well, if Luana Gilliam had gotten out of the band, you wouldn't know Jesus. Now think, my mother would say, of what you and Luana can do with that band now. <laughs> you see, I was led to Christ by someone who was fulfilling a dream of being a Vicette. You will change lives on your dream journey. Reclaim your dreams, not for you, but for the people who are waiting to be inspired by you. Young people, old people, the world needs you to have the courage to do this. So I want to leave you with a familiar Bible story, and I believe this story will bless you, no matter your faith, and no matter, I know we all are Christians in this building, but I think it will bless you. In Luke, the first chapter, and I know you know the story, you should anyway. In Luke, the first chapter, there was a sister named Elizabeth. You know the story? Elizabeth was married to Zachariah. Elizabeth was old and was unable to have a baby of her own. Yeah? She had given up on the possibility. How many of you in here feel that the thing you want to do, the thing you're passionate about, has somehow passed you by? Your time has passed. You, you missed your window. An angel came to Zachariah and told him what God was going to do, and he said, fear not. I will give you a son and he shall be called John. Well, Zachariah didn't believe it, and because he didn't believe, the angel said he would be dumb, unable to speak until the promise was fulfilled. Now, how many of us just didn't believe? Didn't believe in ourselves to the point we couldn't even speak about it. We weren't physically dumb, but we may as well have been because we allowed fear and doubt to paralyze us. The opposite of faith is not doubt. The opposite of faith is fear. Fear keeps us from moving, from growing, from acting on our dreams and our goals. Then, and uh, this is my favorite part, Elizabeth hid herself for the first five months. And I can imagine she was old and a bit embarrassed. And I'm just using my imagination here. I'm an actor. You know, that's what we do. And apparently, the baby had not been moving. And I'm sure there was a 
fear of miscarriage. And her cousin Mary came to visit. Yep, that Mary. The one that would later have a virgin birth. After the angel spoke to Mary, she went to visit her cousin. God lays it on us a lot of times to call people to go visit people and we don't do it. But the angel told her to go visit her cousin. And when Mary called out to Elizabeth, the scripture says that Elizabeth's baby leapt in her womb. Now I think I want you to think of the baby as your purpose, your calling, your mission. Think of no one validating your dreams, never giving you a high five and a prayer. Think of all you've been through and one day Mary comes over and when she speaks, your baby, your dream leaps. You thought your baby was dead and it leaps. Well, family, 12th District, I came to be your Mary today. I came to speak and prayerfully make your baby jump. I came to tell you to spend your time with people who make your baby jump. I came to tell you that you are worthy. You are ready, you are primed, and it is not too late that the timing is perfect now to come out of hiding. Now bring it on. The inventions, the songs, the books, the new business, bring it on. And for the students in here today, this is my wish for you, that you will chase your dreams down like your life depends on it. Because in my opinion, your life depends on it. Our lives depend on it. That's my wish for you. That you will pursue your purpose with all you have. That you will walk out to the edge. Grab hold of all you want to achieve. Hold on to God and jump. Jump to your destiny. Now to the seasoned dreamer. For those of you who feel like ah, it's too late for all that, you've dreamed and tried and dreamed and cried and you may be discouraged and tired, but maybe, just maybe, all you got to do is push. Maybe, just maybe, you've been in labor a long time and maybe it's just time for you to give it one last push to birth that baby, to birth that dream that's inside of you. Your obedience in doing that will bless someone. I want to thank you for having me. I want to thank the bishop. I want to thank all the leaders. I want to thank my buddy D and all of you. I pray that you will have the courage to pursue whatever is living inside you because we need it. The world can be healed by your book. The world can be healed by your song. Whatever you have to do, you do not have the right not to do it. In the name of Jesus, be blessed, family. Welcome back. Hope that you enjoyed the speech by Angela Robinson, a.k.a. Veronica Harrington from the Have and the Have Nots. You can Google her, too, to find out more information about her. Um, did not know that she was from Jacksonville, did not know she went to Reigns High School, so on and so forth. So I learned a lot, you know, so um, you just never know, you know. And I grew up over in that area where she grew up in as well. So you just never know. You just never know. Uh, with that being said, uh, you know, we like for you to like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube. We'd like to hear your questions and your comments. You can e email us. And uh, as I was saying to you earlier in the show that please tune in to the third uh, Monday of every month. We have Kathy Meeks, Dr. Meeks, our certified sex therapist, uh, giving out a lot of great information. Just coming off a workshop, which was called Love and Relationships. Um, we're going to talk about that on the show as well, show some pictures and so on and so forth. 
uh, understand she got some great feedback. She's going to be doing a part two, so you have to stick around for that in a sense to find out when the next one is going to be, and you do not want to miss that. I'm telling you, it was great information, great information. Again, the third Monday of every month, you let people know that they can tune in, text your questions, or email your questions, and we'll, she'll be happy to um, answer your questions. Or you can set up an appointment, and she can talk about why that is so very important as well. That's Kathy Meeks from Robinson & Associates. You can Google that as well. Um, because, you know, when it comes to counseling, we need to have the right attitude to help take ourselves a little higher uh, for, uh, um, to help ourselves mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and so on and so forth. So that's very, very important. The other show that I was telling you about on the fourth Monday of every uh, month, we will be talking with Akeem Nkrumah from Young Fathers of Central Florida, and we'll be talking about uh, your rights as a parent um, when it comes to child support. You know, maybe you're trying to get custody of your child. Maybe you're trying to get visitation rights. Maybe you have questions about, you know, child support payments, uh, the procedures. Uh, do you need a lawyer? Uh, you know, so on and so forth. So we'll, we will be able to answer all of those questions. Um, whatever you going through, um, we can point you in a direction that you should go. We will have counselors on here. Uh, as well to answer your questions legally. So make sure that um, we are, you know, uh, able to answer those questions from a legal standpoint. And again, that's the fourth Monday of every month right here at www.thejourney2020.com. We'd love to have your feedback, like I said. We'd love to, uh, if you have some show ideas, maybe you want to be on the show, uh, we'd love to hear from you. And um, with that being said, Thank you so very much for tuning in. And like I said, um, I'm just sitting here and I'm thinking back how, because today is the first day of school. And, you know, that could be a good thing or that could be a, a really good thing, like if you're a parent, right? <laughs> and how excited you are as a child um, and what it's like for the first graders to go to school for the very first time and that whole first day of school, leaving home for some of them. And then there's those that are returning who are getting ready for their senior year, those that are transitioning from middle school to high school, those that are transitioning from elementary school to middle school, so on and so forth. And I wonder what it's like because what is first day of school like for those that's being homeschooled? You know, do you go out? and go shopping for new clothes <laughs> if you're being homeschooled? <laughs> hey, you know, that's a good question. If you're being homeschooled, do you go out shopping for clothes for school? All right, all right. I don't know. Um, I never, when, I, when we were going to school, nobody was homeschooled. Everybody was there at school. Uh, and I can remember, and I asked this question, Miss Argret was my, I'm saying, can you remember your, all of your elementary school teachers? Miss Argret was my first grade teacher. Miss Jones was my second grade teacher. Miss Brown was my third grade teacher. Oh man, Miss Day was my fourth grade teacher. Miss Phillips was my fifth grade teacher. And Miss Bradley was my sixth grade teacher, my homeroom teacher as well. So with that being said, man, those six teachers, I can, I still see them. I still see them to this day, and uh, the important role that they played in the everlasting imprint on my life uh, that all of them made. All of my teachers who was there to help me. Uh, thank you so very much. I appreciate your patience. I appreciate your effort. Appreciate your spirit. Appreciate you taking the time for those who uh, reached out and. Um, you know, doing what you can to help so many. Uh, educators are, I think, are some of the key people in the world. They help shape the world and affect so many lives in so many ways. Of course, they're so severely so underpaid in so many ways and unappreciated in more ways than you can ever put into words. 
So with that being said, again, I'm Charles Morris and hope you enjoyed um, Angela Robinson, a.k.a. Veronica Harrington on the on the show, The Have and The Have Nots. Uh, I'm going to have to tune in because I understand that she is not a nice person on that show, you know, and they laughed about it. So I'm going to have to tune in and check out her character just to see who she is. And so with that being said, I'm Charles Morris. Enjoy the rest of your week. You be blessed. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't leave without, oh man, I can't leave without saying you make sure you tune in 11 o'clock on Wednesday for Youth Central Sports with myself and the one, the true, the first, the original Coach Carter. <laughs> he said, I'm not the famous one, but I'm the original and I'm the first because he said he was, you know, he was born first. Uh, so with that being said, where we talk about some of in and everything when it comes to sports, we'd love for you to chime in on Youth Central Sports. That's www.youthcentralsports.com. And uh, you can check us out, hit us up, text us, ask questions. And we, we definitely will be talking about some football, uh, college football. We'll be talking about the NBA. We'll be talking about baseball. We will be talking about just some of any and everything when it comes to sports. Um, I think one of the things that we're going to talk about uh, coming up is uh, Vince was very heavily involved with the Pro-Am here in the Central Florida area, where now he's up in Tennessee. He's going to break down that Pro-Am uh, um, uh, event, how they all put it together. Is it still going on? And uh, some of the people who have been through the Pro-Am, names that you would recognize. So you make sure you tune in Wednesday at 11 p.m. Eastern Time at Youth Central Sports, all right, with me, Vince Carter, all right. With that being said, you have yourself a blessed evening. I'm Charles Morris. Charlie.